So quickly, before we start, I just wanted to show you how exactly the oiling system on an N54 works. And your thermostat is going to slide in from here, and it's going to be regulating the uh, oil flow between these two channels here. From factory, it is supposed to be 110 Celsius, which is somewhere close to like 220, 230-ish Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. Sorry, American guys. I consider that way too high for even a street car, but especially a performance street car. Number nine hose is going to be your flow hose, and number 10 is going to be your return hose. So it's going to flow from this right little knob through this nine hose, and it's going to return on number 10. On the internet, you will find information about two types of uh, thermostats one for the 06 and 07 cars this is the type 7 from 2008 and on they switched up to the this different design which uh, has a slightly different uh, plunger to it but my car is a 2006 october car and it has this design which looks nothing like the type 7 or the type 8 design i call this the go fuck yourself design because there's no any information on what is compatible with this what you can use with this how you can use it so just keep this in mind there's actually three types of it why is the 07 type and the 08 type different the 07 type has a slimmer little rod here that's going to go into the cap of the thermostat versus the 08 type has the thicker one which will uh, slide into the uh, cap section. Otherwise, the spring is very, very similar. I don't know if they're the same in length, but they're very similar, and the whole design itself is very similar. Now, what I'm talking about is this little hole here. This is where it will slide in, and the stock one, as you can see, you can see on this picture, is slightly smaller than the aftermarket ones. This one, is the easiest tuning one. Uh, the thermostat that I bought, I later contacted the support and the support uh, told me that I should have bought the cap as well. Because the first time I tried to assemble this, I could not fit this part into the cap. I think this is a prob uh, this is a failure and I had this issue because I have the, the fuck you type of plunger from factory but maybe you will need to also upgrade your cap even if you uh, have the type 7 or the type 8. What I would recommend is that you buy the cap and uh, the thermostat all together. Uh, this other cap that I put here next to it, this is the one that I'm actually going to install. As you can see the design is slightly different and the spring actually sits on this little place here compared to here. On the ECS one. I see no issues with this design and it works out flawlessly as you will see in the video. So this one is about half the price plus I would have to pay a ton of taxes if I wanted to buy this one so I opted to use this one from AliExpress. Now before you do this just check your thermostat. Check which type of thermostat you have. This is very important if you have the 07 or the 08, just check which one it is and order accordingly. If you do this, I recommend that you might as well just change your uh, cap at the same time because it's you already have to take it off anyway. So it's worth upgrading so you have no issues. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that there's multiple types of these thermostats. There's types that open at 70 degrees, 90 degrees, and then there's the factory one that opens at 110 degrees Celsius. And what's interesting about this, and you will see this in the video, I will try to show even on the inside, but the, the upgraded version of the low temp valve is going to go in reversed compared to the original factory one. As you can see on the factory one, the plunger is on this side, and the plunger is going to go straight into the cap. But on the upgraded one, the plunger is going to be on the other side, and this little cutout part is going to be the one that's going to go into the cap, 
and it's going to compress everything. But you will see this in the video. So I'm trying out a new type of video here. This way you can see what I'm actually doing while I'm doing it and I don't have to stop every time to show what I'm actually doing. So to access the thermostat, it's going to be in here. So to access the thermostat, you need to actually remove this engine cover. Now I do have the back bolts also installed there. So I'm also going to have to take off this little tray here. And you also need to remove this bolt then there's only these two little bolts which hold the thermostat cover on. Okay, there it is. So we're gonna just loosen it. There you are. You see there's a slight gap here so make sure your seals are pretty new mine was changed very recently with the last oil change so i'm not too worried about it leaking but do make sure that your seal there is okay now that we have this bolt out we can switch over i think it is a 30 30 t30 head that's needed for here yeah, it's a T30, so we're just going to loosen it up. Now this is spring loaded, so the spring is pushing against this little cover here, so I'm going to use an extension here. <laughs> out you see i'm just putting everything on the ground so i'm gonna have to clean up everything afterwards now it's easiest to do it if you just hold this cap a little bit apply some pressure to it okay now it's off i'm trying not to drop it okay there it is so here's the original one new one it is very similar but this is more like the uh 08 style which has a slightly larger little pin area so here's the new valve as you can see the uh it's going to be slightly different than the original one so the original one as you can see the plunger is on this side facing outwards and the plunger goes inside of here but in the new version the plunger is going to be facing inwards and this little rod part is the one that's going to be sticking out and into the cap so this is the plunger and the spring from factory and it works like this the spring is like this and it goes in like this you see it's actually super loose in there so i'm not too worried about this being a little bit loose in here but this is basically how it looks like so it goes through here and it's going to sit on top of it and into the and it's going to sit into this part here now i am going to clean this up because it's been sitting on my desk in a little plastic bag for two weeks this arrived way quicker than the top part and i have dog hair everywhere because of this little guy so Trying not to put any of that into the engine. I heard that's not the best for oil ink purposes. This is what the previous setup looked like. And this is the new setup. So it's reversed. All right. So let me just put in this first. So the plunger. Oops, don't drop it. And I can just put this on the 
screws so we can hold it into place along with this part so we can just screw it down okay it goes onto the plunger in it goes as it should and now we're just going to tighten it down so i'm only going to hand tighten it first and then i'm gonna have to take off the phone from my head and uh, take a look at the specs on the torque spec i think this is on the lower end i think this is something like a 10 but i'm gonna have to look it up to make sure okay so let's look up the torque specs and then i'm gonna torque down this bolt too which goes into the uh, cooler assembly itself okay so i looked it up and the torque spec for these two bolts is going to be something around 10 newton meters uh, i don't know how much that is in american so don't listen to me but also just use your feeling okay so like if it feels like it's going to strip just don't push it replace the screw it's better to replace the screw than to replace the assembly there it is and that's 10. it doesn't feel like it's stripping so i'm turning it a little bit more good so that's 10. and for the i got this spec off of the Muslim one, Muslim, Muslim. I have no fucking clue how to say that. On that part, it is mentioned that 19 uh, newton meters should be used to tighten this bolt into this little part of the cooler. Okay. So what? It's time for the startup. What sucks is that I'm not able to actually diagnose anything that much because uh, the belt is slipping so it makes a horrible noise so what i'm going to do here is i'm also going to take off this and then we can listen for any issues on the car itself and we can wait for it to warm up and see if we actually manage to achieve anything or manage to achieve nothing so put it out into neutral Then I'm gonna lower the windows just so if there's any issues I can run back. I hear no issues, not even the belt squeal. Oh, yeah, the belt squeal is there. <laughs> Let me see if I can pour some water without pouring it onto the generator. Oh yeah, it's the belt. It's better than having a squealy engine. How you gonna get the women with the fucking squealy engine, huh? You ain't gonna get no bitches if your engine is squealing, guys. Okay, this can go back to where it came from. Am I gonna do this while the engine's running? Yes, of fucking course I am. Car's ready for a test drive. I see no leaks here, which is good. So, while well, keeping an eye on temps, we're gonna go for our little first drive. I forgot to put shoes on, which sucks. to reach 210 by now with the stock one I think we should have reached over 120 because that's usually where it hovers so I'm just gonna slow down a bit here give them some space all right
that should be enough to give some heat into the car. I'm not too comfortable pushing it harder because I, as I said, I'm, I don't even have wear shoes right now, so. This is definitely uh, over what uh, the stock one does. The stock one would have uh, easily, easily climbed to 220 by now. By now, bro, by now it should be like around 240. Uh, a couple of pulls you do on the stock one, it's gonna be over 240. Like for me, that's how it was. Maybe I just had a bad valve or a bad, uh, bad thermostat but uh, for me, it would have been over like 240 degrees. And it's already going down. 210, it's already settling. So I think we've achieved greatness. I'm so fucking happy, honestly. This project has been going on for way too fucking long, actually. I spent a ton of time and effort researching this, so I'm super happy that it looks like it's gonna work out. thing but we're already going down this is insane you don't understand as an n54 owner that is sick oh for fuck's sake it's back to 210 great it's about 100 degrees celsius i think that is what i would normally consider acceptable for a normal drive honestly you guys don't see right now but i'm fucking smiling ear to ear i'm so happy this car used to have such problems with uh overheating mainly the issue is that anytime you start pushing it after like 15 minutes the car is gonna overheat no matter what and it cools down like dog shit like absolute dog shit like no matter what you do you're still gonna end up having to waste like 20 minutes of your track time each time after 15 minutes to uh, cool down the car after each session. All right, so it seems that the oil temperature doesn't go down to 195 or maybe uh, the measuring itself and the thermostat itself is not that accurate, of course. So I wasn't actually hoping it would stay right there, but I'm super happy that it's staying way cooler than it usually does. I honestly think this is a great success.